I must say, it never gets old having such a unique car and such a unique ignition system. I think it's so cool. Anyways, so today on this episode, we are going to be working on the 2008 blue Saab 9.3 Aero with the potentially rotten engine. And what we're going to be doing is trying to do some diagnosing to see if we can get it to fire, to turn over, to do anything. So an engine needs fuel, air, spark, compression, all of that stuff. So we're going to kind of break it down. So what we'll be doing is we're going to check to see if the fuel system is priming, if we hear the fuel pump, if the fuel rail has pressure on the engine, if it has spark. If it doesn't have spark, try to determine why it's not getting spark. And then even further to see if it has compression because if the head gasket is in question which it is that compression could be actually going into the cooling system it's not going to fire if it doesn't have any of the factors the fuel the air the spark the compression so in this episode we're going to try to determine and see if we can get anything to work and if not well we have a solution for that as well so in the meantime we're going to work with what we have and maybe you'll learn something about diagnosing and let's go ahead and tear into it
So I ended up pulling the coil packs. This is the front three cylinders. These are the coil packs for the rear three. I believe these coils are a mixture of Bosch and Delphi brand, but they're definitely worn out. The rubber is all dried and cracked and it's real squishy. And also all of this crap on the side. To me, it seems like the valve cover gaskets have been leaking, kind of getting on the sides of these and working their way down. But I would say these are definitely past their prime. And then additionally, here are the plugs I pulled out. Pretty gross. All of them are pretty much that disgusting. It's probably difficult to see all the way down in there, but the first three cylinders here on the front, there's a little moisture in there and some carbon cruddy deposits and this motor has 173,000 miles on it I believe so it's not uncommon for the rings to get a little worn out some oil to get in there or the original turbo from what I suspect so if the turbo is worn out it can be letting oil in but what concerns me is the moisture and then if you've ever done a spark plug change on these two eights they're pretty fun the back cylinders Pretty tricky to get to. Down in there, there's more moisture. And judging by the back three that I pulled out, we're pretty much doused in coolant. And from what the previous owner told me, fortunately they were rather forthcoming and basically said they were having overheating issues. They kept filling it up they thought initially was the overflow tank replaced that was still going down on the coolant they bought a water pump and i think a thermostat housing as well but they didn't get to change those and they told me that they believe it's the head gasket which just initially from pulling these plugs i haven't even ran the motor yet but pulling the plugs and looking down in the cylinders i would suspect that it's correct so i'm going to got my compression testers So unfortunately, those are the numbers of the front cylinders, 65, 40, and 50. So at this point, there's no sense of really going and compression testing the other bank if this one's so low. So that pretty much leads me to believe and confirm that this engine, it's no bueno. Alright, so we already know the front three bank, the front three cylinders have low compression. But I wouldn't say it's low enough to where the car will not start. So for whatever reason, the car is not firing over. So I'm going to continue on doing a little diagnosing and I'll kind of show you some of the things that at least I do when I'm trying to determine what's going on with the car. Basically you need fuel air spark and also compression so compression it's kind of so so right now but you know air is kind of a given there's no restrictions and all the air pipes are in place you can't have an issue with the mass airflow sensor but that's kind of another rant but basically what we need to check is are we getting spark and are we getting fuel so to start for fuel when I turn the key inside I hear the fuel pump prime. Now, I don't know from that point if fuel's getting up here. So one quick way to test is, at least on this engine, there's what's called a Schrader valve, which is kind of like a valve stem for your tire. And there's a little cap up top here. 
right here that you would put a fuel pressure tester on. Now I do not have one, so we're just gonna gonna blow fuel everywhere. So I would definitely say we are getting fuel pressure up at least on the rail. Now there could be issues with the injectors themselves, but right there we can tell we're getting fuel. And the amount that it kinda shot out of there, it's definitely under some pressure. So like I said, I don't have a fuel pressure tester to determine what exactly the fuel pressure is, but at least we know fuel is at least getting up to this point. So, we check compression, we kind of check fuel, now we're going to check spark. So there's a lot of different reasons why you wouldn't be getting spark. One of the common problems on these vehicles is the crankshaft position sensor on these 2.8s. They are rather difficult to get to. They are on kind of the back side and they are somewhat of a nightmare to get to. But that would be a reason why you are not getting spark if that is your case. One of the things to check for is whenever you turn the key and you're starting the car, if you're seeing the RPM gauge go up or if you do have a Tech 2 and you have it hooked up and you're looking at the live data of the RPMs, if those don't move, more than likely it's actually the crank position sensor and that would cause it to have a no spark issue. Let's go ahead and pull off a coil check the spark. So the coils on the front three cylinders are super simple to pull out. Just a single 10 mil and a 5 8 spark plug socket. And here is one of these spark plugs. Go ahead, take the spark plug, put it back in the coil, and hook that back up. So now you'll want to take and set it near some metal, and we will see if we're getting spark. So, not a lot of people know that you don't necessarily have to be inside the car and turning the key, cranking it over to tell if you have spark. Yes, there's tools that you can put in line here and see if there's a spark going on, but I do not have that. So, what we are going to do, we're gonna pull the fuel pump fuse, which is number 35, and then this yellow relay. Don't know what number it is. Relay number eight, R8. I'm gonna pull that. We are going to take some alligator clips onto the positive terminal of the battery. Then we just have it in a loose wire. And then what we'll do is tap the number 87. So the car will turn over that way. Now if you're ever in a situation to where you turn the key and it's not starting and there's an issue with the starting system, whether it be the, starting, the starter relay or the starter is actually stuck, you can actually go ahead and do this system here and start your car. So one caveat to that, your key does need to turn all the way. So if your key, if your battery's totally dead and the key's not even turning, no dice, not gonna work. So I need to go in, side the vehicle, turn the key, and we'll see if we get spark. All right, key is in the on position. Go ahead and take our little jerry rig setup here. So, right there, we know we are getting spark, at least to this cylinder. So you can go ahead and check each cylinder 
and that way you can actually determine if you do have a coil bad and there's plenty other methods of testing this and whatnot but this is kind of a generic way of doing it a simple way so in a nutshell we know we have fuel whether it's the right pressure or not that we don't know but we know it's at least getting fuel two we know it's getting spark three we know it's getting air compression not the best but we know for a fact we are getting it so continuing onward what leads me to believe that the head gasket is in fact bad is that one the previous owner told me it was two each cylinder has some moisture in it three oil is definitely mixed with antifreeze drain the oil and it is no bueno and another reason and I think the nail in the coffin is the simple fact that the compression is low it's going somewhere and that somewhere is the cooling system so if you listen closely you'll be able to hear the gurgling of the coolant in the cooling system as the engine turns over that right there is where the compression is going the compression for sure is funneling through the cooling system so there is a issue with the head gaskets could be one could be both judging by the cylinders I would say both and then the reason even though we have all these factors we have the air we have the spark we have the fuel the reason that it's not actually turning over is the fact that the coolant too much of it is in the cylinders diluting the fuel and there's not enough for the combustion of the engines so it does unfortunately suck but we knew it going into this car that there was something going on with the engine and like I said the reason why I got such a great deal on it so that's gonna wrap it for this video Grew into myself rather tired did a little diagnosing found out some bad news but you know what Pruy? we will figure out a solution <laughs> The best dog ever but with that being said i do appreciate you watching be sure to like share and subscribe if you have any questions comments concerns be sure to drop a comment down below on the next episode we are going to be changing out some tires getting rid of the old crusty dry rotted tires on the blue sob as well as doing a little digging with the rear door lock seeing what's going on with that as well as hopefully fixing the rear window regulator I have the parts, whether I have the time, that's a different story. So that's the game plan for the next episode. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. More likes, more subs, more shares. Pruy gets more belly rubs. All right, thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time. I've been